Today we are going to study another traversing technique that is depth first search traversal of a graph with the help of example and algorithm. Followed by we will see algorithms working and we will also see the difference between two traversing techniques that is between depth first search and breadth first search applied on a graph. Let us start with depth first search technique. In this technique, algorithm starts from some arbitrary selected node that is labeled as root node and it starts or it explores nodes or vertices in depth as down as possible or as deep as possible along the each branch before it takes exploring another branch. Now, to understand depth for search traversal of a graph, we will consider example that is shown over the screen. Now, in this example, there are eight vertices and there are some set of edges. Now, traversing is referred to visiting each and every vertex of a graph at least once. For that reason, BFS makes use of data structure that is called as set. So, first difference between BFS and DFS is that BFS uses new data structure while DFS uses stack data structure. Now, to keep track of which nodes are left to get visited, we have one visit array in which the length of array is 8 because there are 8 vertices in a graph. Initially, visit of each vertex is set to 0 because they are still left to get visited. Now, in this traversal technique, we have to select an unvisited vertex. As soon as we visit them, we will push them inside a stack. But let us start from our very own selected root vertex that is A. You can select any of the A vertices as your root vertex. But here I am working alphabetically. That's why I am selecting my root vertex as vertex A. Now this vertex is set to or pushed inside a set as soon as it is visited. Now when I say vertex is visited, we are actually making vertex of visit array to 1. That is, we are changing from 0 to 1. So, entry of A in visit array is set to 1 and it is also pushed inside stack. Now, remember the working of stack. Stack is last in first out data structure. That is, whatever is inserted in the last will be removed very first. That is, it is having only one end, that is top of stack. Now, what is second step in DFS? Second step says that for each adjacent vertex, that is, A vertex is having two adjacents. For each adjacent that is unvisited, we have to go back to step number one and visit them in a same fashion. If all the adjacents of a particular vertex are visited, then only we can go and pop out that element from stack. Now to understand the working, A vertex is having two adjacents. But we will first take first adjacent that is B. You can here also take F also but here I am working alphabetically. Now B is the first adjacent of A. We have visited B, that's why a visit of B is set to 1. Also, we pushed it inside a stack. Now, from this B vertex is my current vertex, and from here we are going to visit unvisited adjacent. So, B is also having two adjacents, that is A and B. But A is also already visited, so we will select another adjacent, that is E. So, that E vertex will get visited. So, visit of E is set to 1 as well as it is pushed inside stack. Now, from here my current vertex is E. 
from E we have to visit unvisited adjacent. E has only one adjacent that is B, but it is already visited. That's why E doesn't have any unvisited adjacent. So we are going to remove that element from stack because all the adjacents of E are now visited. Now B is my current vertex. From B we have to find out all the unvisited adjacents. But from graph you can see that B has only two adjacents A and E. Both are visited. From R A we can see that that both are get visited. That's why we are going to remove B. Now B is removed. So my current or top of this set element is A. Are there any adjacent of A which are still unvisited? Yes. Adjacent of A which is vertex F which is still unvisited. So we are going to visit vertex F. Its visit value is set to 1 and it is also pushed inside stack. Current node or current vertex is F. From F, is there any adjacent which is unvisited? Yes, F has two adjacents and both of them are unvisited. Actually, F is having three adjacents, A, C and G. But one is already visited. So, unvisited adjacents are two, C and G. We can select C or G, any of these two, but I will prefer to go alphabetically. That is, first adjacent of F is C. So we will select the C, visit it, that is, its visit will be set to 1 and it is pushed inside a set. Now C is my current vertex. We have to find out unvisited adjacents. So unvisited adjacents of C are 2, that is C and G. We will go alphabetically, first select C. Now, D vertex is getting visited, its visit value is set to 1 and it is pushed inside that. Now, from here, what we have to do? We have to find out unvisited adjacent of current D vertex. It has only one unvisited adjacent, that is vertex H. Now, this H vertex is getting visited. From H, visit of H is set to 1 and it is also pushed inside that. Now H is my current vertex. From H we have to find out unvisited adjacent. So unvisited adjacent of H is G. So we will set by visit of G as 1 and we will also push it inside that. Now from G we have to find out unvisited adjacent. G has 3 adjacents F, C and H but 3 of them all are visited. That's why we have to remove it. Now top of this set is H. So we are ha we have to find out all the vertices which are adjacent and unvisited. So adjacent to H is G and D, but both of them are actually visited. So we are going to remove H or pop out from a stack. Now next to top of this stack is D. Are there any unvisited adjacents of D? No. Both of the adjacent services is so we are going to remove it. Coming up to top element as P, are there any unvisited adjacent? It has three adjacents F, G, and D. All these three adjacents are visited, so we are going to remove them. Now from F, it is having three adjacents. All of them are visited, so we are going to remove F. Similar for A. It has two adjacents, both of them are visited, so we are going to remove it. Now, as you can see from stack, there are, and stack is empty, and there is no vertex which is left as unvisited. If there are any vertex which is left unvisited, we have to start from that vertex as our root vertex and start exploring graph from new root. So this is your BFS tree. From A we have first visited B, B to E. From E we have gone back to B. From B we have gone back to A. From A we have gone to F. Then we have gone to C, C, H and lastly G. So this is your 
TFS Tower the on. For your practice, one exercise is given which is consisting of vertices from E to H and there are some set of S. You can traverse the given graph using TFS traversing of graph technique. Now let us understand algorithm for the TFS. Now for an algorithm of DFS which takes input G and starting or initial vertex B. So one root is must be get selected to start the traversing of DFS. We have to first visit a particular vertex and we will put it inside a stack. But here instead of using stack, we are going to make use of recursion. So recursion already uses stack. So stack is not implemented separately. It is maintained with the help of recursion. So for each edge or each vertex U, which is an adjacent to vertex V in a graph G. If it is unvisited, then we apply VFS on the graph using an adjacent U vertex. So again, recursive call is made to DFS algorithm. It is again going and now setting your adjacent vertex U as your new root or C vertex. It will get visited and its adjacent would get fine. If adjacent will not be there, again it will be calling to DFS algorithm recursively. So this is your recursive DFS algorithm. Let us see difference between two techniques that is TFS and TFS. Both of these techniques are having means that depth for search and breadth for search. DFS is traversing is performed using stack data structure while BFS using traversing using Q data structure. So first we'll use LIPO and another will use LIPO. The third difference between DFS and DFS is that DFS is suitable when there are solutions which is away from root. That is my DFS technique is going in depth first. So as soon as the complete branch is not yet traversed, it will not come back and not go to another branch. So it is more suitable in a graph where from root to some other solution vertex the distance is low. So we can apply in those cases DFS method. While for DFS which is more suitable for searching vertices which is closer to some given vertex. So DFS is selecting a current vertex and try to figure out and search out all the adjacent of the particular vertex before it goes into some vertex. So when a uh, given node or a root node and a solution node is quite closer, we have to apply DFS. Next difference is DFS is more suitable for game puzzle problems which makes a decision that it trying to find out the path of decision that like if I take this move what are the next possible move if this move is selected what will be the move and it try to lead down the solution in depth whether am I going to win or not unless and until before we go to another solution so DFS is uh, more uh, suitable for game or decision making problem while BFS is visiting first all the neighbors it is not suitable for decision making or three puzzle games. Now applications of DFS. DFS is uh, applicable or used in finding topological sorting. You will see in a separate video what do we mean by topological sorting. Whenever backtracking problem will be applied like uh, four queens or n queens problem will be there. We will see with a separate video lecture what do we mean by backtracking problem. But in uh, topological sorting and backtracking, as well as finding the cycles in a graph or finding the path between two nodes, whether it exists or not, in all these kind of applications, we have to apply 
traversing of BFS tracks. BFS is applied when we have to find the shortest distance between two nodes to test whether a graph is bipyrite or not, finding all the connected components of a graph or not, or finding the connected components in a graph. In all these applications, BFS will get applied. Now, one common point between BFS and DFS both is that complexity of them is big O of E plus E when graph is represented using addressing list that is using linked list representation if we use linked list representation of a graph and try to implement BFS or DFS algorithm it will have complexity is big O of E plus E that is number of vertices plus number of edges if the uh, same graph is represented using adjacency matrix, then BFS and DFS both are having complexity big O of T square. That is number of vertices square. That is the common point between DFS and DFS traversal of graph. Thank you everyone for watching this video. This is Munira Topia. Thank you.